Let's get back to some speed back exercises. So, start with part A. You'll notice here, there's a typo. It's literally unacceptable. No, just kidding. So, start with this. If T is, I'll just call it IPP for inner product preserving because I don't have time to write all those words. Then, in particular, for all X and RN, what do we have? We have TX squared. Well, we know that this is equal to the inner product of TX with TX, which by inner product, by IPP-ness, is equal to this, which is equal to norm x squared. So, taking square roots, tx equals x. So that's one direction. If t is np, um, and that's that doesn't mean non-polynomial time or whatever, that means not norm preserving, then for all x and rn, tx equals x, so tx squared equals x squared. Then for all x and y in rn, we have I'm just, instead of using actual words, I'm just going to use symbols. Um, that'll make this very compact. This squared equals this squared. Well, that implies what does it mean? What do these things mean? Um, normally, I would write like t of x comma y here, but I'll actually break it up here. Txy minus ty. I'm just kind of maybe skipping a few steps equals and then x minus y x minus y then what does this imply? well if you actually break this all up you get tx tx minus 2 tx ty plus ty ty and this is going to be equal to on the right you get comma x minus 2 xy plus yy and instead of writing out another step here where you actually write oh well these tx tx is equal to this we're just going to cancel them right out here um, so this cancels with this this cancels with this and then here we get the minuses and the twos cancel and, well, what does that leave us with? It leaves us with ty tx equals xy. Nope, we need a y in there. And so it's IPP. So IPP if and only if NP. That doesn't be. If T is um, so your NP, let's say, then if X is not equal to Y, then X minus Y is non-zero, which means that the norm of X minus Y is not equal to zero, but this is norm preserving, so tx minus y is not equal to zero. But that can only happen if this thing on the inside is non-zero. That means, well, hey, tx is not equal to ty. So next, um, if 
x is in the image of t, the image of r under, under t, then we know, um, so here there exist, let's just say there exists a unique y in Rn such that t inverse x is in such that y equals t inverse x and so let's see here so t inverse x is equal to y this is just something in Rn so we use norm preserving this so t of t inverse x equals t inverse well here let's make this a little more kind of build up the suspense a little ty equals y <coughs> excuse me t of t inverse x is equal to T inverse of X. And so, because these functions are nice and linear, X equals T inverse. Hmm. Now that I'm thinking about here, am I using circular logic? T of T inverse X. No, we know that this is fine because t inverse x is a unique value y, and then this is just whatever it's mapping it to. Because t of, right, t, t inverse x is y. y is the thing that maps to x. And so if you bring it back and bring it back forth, yeah, this, this follows, this being equal to x, we're able to say this because t is one to one. So anyways, x is equal to t inverse x. Um, but then this means that t inverse is norm preserving. Um, so t inverse is one to one. And that's because of the thing that we just did before. We know that for all t which are np, then t is one to one. And so in particular, since t in inverse is np, t inverse is 1 to 1. And this completes the proof.